Business is your guide to book publishing. Everything you want to know but didn't know what to ask with your host, Dr. Judith Bryles. On the show today, you'll find out where book publishing is going and how to take advantage of it. How to identify and avoid publishing predators. What opportunities are emerging as the book trade evolves in new forms. How to avoid losing money and much, much more. Join us now as a variety of publishing pros will deliver insights and strategies to take the author to the next, next level of publishing. It's your guide to book publishing. Everything you want to know but didn't know what to ask. Brought to you by Author You and The Book Shepherd. And now, here's your host, Dr. Judith Bryles. Well, I can't believe that we are so close to autumn starting here officially on this coming weekend, but it's here. I'm back. I've been away. Um, away. We pre-recorded the last couple of sessions on timelines that I did for you, and I'm going to bring up, and usually I start with this one. I'm going to do this one live because we're going to talk about the cost of publishing. But while I was away, I worked and noodled outlines for my three next books. And sometimes, I think what's really important for all of us authors to understand is that it's, it's a good idea to pull away from your everyday routine, your environments, the, the noise, the emails, the constant texts, the phone calls, whatever it is that can be your normal everyday routine and pull away from that. What I was doing, I was in Europe. And I did what was a transatlantic cruise across. And I played, I played in France a day, mm -hmm. and I played a little bit in Ireland. And um, eventually I got on a ship and we did a transatlantic. And during that time is when I, I buckle down and I write for hours and hours and hours and hours. And uh, one book, I, I, I completed half of it. But it's, I discovered that I went in to do one book, which was going to be the publishing timelines, and I ended up with three that came out of it in these new mini guides I'm going to do for publishing. So I'm excited about that, and now I just have to find now the time to complete them. But they're well on their way that now I can deal with them in the normal distractions of everyday uh, living and working as we all do it. So what we're going to do is we're going to focus on costs. The costs, the good, the bad, and sometimes the really ugly, um, and let me get into it. So when you can keep your costs really down, here, here's the first real hint for you. One, your book, your manuscript, your draft is really well written, and you don't need developmental or con what we call developmental or content editing. Um, and I'll get into the, what that is all about in just a sec. But what you really need is to move into just full-blown copy, proof editing, then, the, the, then where the book can move into formal layout. It works well when you, as the author, is really decisive, and you can make quick decisions, and you don't diddle around or procrastinate or go back and forth. And the third thing that works really well in keeping these costs down is you are, you have moxie, marketing moxie, and that you get what's going on, you understand that you may hate social media and the, some of the time and energy it sucks, but that you need it because it's your town hall, I've said that many, many times. So to keep those costs down, if you're, what you're starting off is really well written. It doesn't need massive editing on it. It needs what, just general proofing and going through and that you really have some marketing, marketing um, smarts about you or you're certainly open and you're not caught on some old things, and old beliefs. Yesterday I did a uh, webinar and I would encourage all of you uh, who are listening in to check in on the authoru.org uh, website and under the learn tab we have our webinar gold and and if you're a, a, a regular member of AuthorU an already paid up member of AuthorU which which I uh, you know I've never really pitched that but maybe I'll talk about that at our at our bottom of the hour here but it pays to become a member of AuthorU 
It's only $99 a year. There's a variety of benefits that come along besides any activities we do are only discounted for members versus people who are non-members, especially the extravaganza. The difference is more than what our membership is um, each May. But the, whole, the webinars, which are going to be, if you're not a member, that we're doing very exclusively drill downs with are $49. Non-members or members get them for free. Non-members pay $49. So you want to take advantage of that. And that's part of being smart here. What you can do to continue your resources going on yesterday, we went through 40 uh, myths out there, beliefs out there, and slashed them all and gave the counter to them. Um, and that was a freebie, and that will be available as a freebie download here in another day, so you can take advantage and just listen to that. The next one coming up is how do you sell your book during holidays, and the reality is is holidays are could be every day of the year. And a heads up, this next week, two weeks from now, October, is the number one book sales month out there. So that's a holiday for an author in itself. And then in two weeks after that, October 1st, we're going to be doing how to sell your books through and via holiday sales. And, um, and so you want to take advantage of that. All right. So those are posted on the Author You website. Just go into the Learn Arena and you'll find that. All right. Let's jump into this. Now, the first is, since I mentioned editing right from the get-go, let's get into what these editing fields are because you can spend not a lot of money or you can spend buku bucks in this area. So let's talk about the buku buck one. And, um, um, and, and, I'll, and I'll go ahead and I'll bring in and I'll add on uh, the whole area of ghostwriting as well. But with content development editing, that you, um, when, when someone is doing real rewriting, and this is what I actually do with authors is more on the, uh, when, when I'm in it, um, I have other people do, proofing and copying editing and what we call a cold eye edit um, that but I get in and gut and rewrite and you might be able to go through one to five manuscript pages in an hour right that's 250 words a page I will confess there are some pages of authors books I've had that are such a freaking mess that I have diddled several hours on them trying to make sense of what they meant, their intent and sense, and put it back together. What you can spend is anywhere from 45 to 100 bucks an hour based on the experience and the pop and pizzazz that that editor will bring to the party. So where does that take you? Well, if you're talking about a 70,000 word book, at roughly 250 words a page, that's 280 pages. 280 pages at five pages an hour is 56 hours. On the low end, you're talking around $2,500. And on the high end, we're talking $20,000. Now, I'm going to share a horror story that came in. Um, and I won't tell you what the genre of the book was. It was a business-related finance book, but it was known as the blank dreaded book in our office because of how it so uh, took, took everything over. And it's not that I certainly, I mean, I knew the field. It's not that I couldn't do the work, and I probably, it was ideal to take it on, but it wasn't budgeted in my time frame. And what it did is it had jeopardized other projects, and it put me into solid 100-hour weeks for a couple of months to meet all the other commitments that had been made. And the book came in, um, well, first of all, it wasn't a book. And so I'm going to go back to keeping your costs done. It's well written. This was not well written. What this individual had done was have several people in his office be contributors to it of which none of them were communicating it. And it came in in Roman numerals. It came into high school outline form, Roman numerals, and then one, two, three, and then smaller case ABC, and then, uh, and then, and then lower case Roman numerals. It was a freaking disaster. And it took a lot of work to turn it into a book. And the book ended up growing from whatever it was 
I probably ended up adding almost 200 pages of copy to this book when it was done. So know from the get-go what the shape your book is in. Is it really readable? Um, I had another book that came in that I threw it back to the author and said, you need to fix this. Came back, well, she did some fixing on it, but there were still problems, but there were workable problems that I could go with and get the rewriting done with it. But there's incomplete sentences, paragraphs that just made any sense where they, where they were dropped in, and you're wondering, did they really sit down and read it line by line before they ever turned it over to someone like myself as the book shepherd for what we can do and take it from there? And the answer is highly improbable. And I know in the first book I was sharing with you, there was no question, and I challenged the, the author, and he, you know, his name's on the book, that there is no way that this book um, was read by him. I know he didn't write it, but he sure didn't read it with it. Because you, you couldn't turn it in from his field. So make sure you know what you have. And you want to turn in as clean as copy as you can before you turn it over to a book consultant to take it off and run with it because they're going to come back and have to, to ding you for maybe prices you never ever expected. All right, let's hop over to copy editing and what's that about and where you go with that. On copy editing, that assumes that your manuscript's in great shape, really pretty good shape. What we're after is spelling mistakes, um, adjustments, minor adjustments for grammar, punctuation. We want to make sure that it's there's consistency, it makes sense, that it segues from one area to the other, that what's in a chapter is a contained in a chapter and now all of a sudden it doesn't dribble into something else. So what we're looking for is not major rewrites. It doesn't mean that we're not going to be doing some slashing on it. I think you need to understand that. There could very well be slashing in the process with that. All right, when we come back, I'm going to get into um, some common things we do look for in that to save you money as well as those cost factor. This is Judith Browse. It's Author You, your guide to book publishing today, and it's all about the costs. is your guide to book publishing. Everything you want to know but didn't know what to ask with your host, Dr. Judith Bryles. And we'll be right back with more great information right after these on the Rockstar Radio Network. Many of us have dreamed of writing a book. Some of us even have. Then the hard work starts. You'll need an editor. Who will design the cover or typeset the pages? Who will format the ebook? If you're a business owner, consultant, or coach with a serious message and expertise to share, the team of experts at 1106 Design can guide you through the maze. They've helped more than a thousand authors create top quality books and avoid the not so reputable self publishing companies. Learn more at 1106design.com. Then call Michelle at 602 866 1106 Design. Is there a book in you or another? Author You will show you how to create, develop, and publish your book without being good with it. If you already have a book out, you'll find a supportive and brainstorming community that's connected and creative no matter where you live. Author You brings in national experts for its book camps and annual author extravaganza held each May. It has regular meetings and delivers webinars for its members on timely topics. Through Author You's extensive network, members enjoy exclusive benefits, including significant discounts for a variety of services necessary to publish. The Resource, its online book publishing news magazine, is content-heavy and it's free. If you want to create a book that has pizzazz, punch, and panache, Author You is for you. If you're a hobbyist or a casual author, it's not. Join Author You today through its website at authoru.org. Follow Author You on Twitter at Author You and on Facebook at Author You, where timely author and publishing tips and articles are posted daily. Author You, where the author goes to become seriously successful. Every 
picture tells a story. And it's a truism that people do judge a book by its cover. Nick Selinger and NZ Graphics have been in the business of producing superior graphic cover design and interior layout for self-published authors, independent and traditional publishers for years. He has developed a reputation for... Excellent work, fast turnarounds, and best of all, affordable pricing. NZ Graphics also produces ebooks and book marketing materials such as posters, sell sheets, postcards, bookmarks, business cards, logos, and more. Books designed for his clients have won multiple book awards, including Best Book Award by U.S. Book News, multiple Evie Awards from the Colorado Independent Publishers Association, Indie Book Awards, the San Francisco Book Festival. Festival Award and Freedom Medal Award from Valley Forge. Visit www.nzgraphics.com or call 303-985-4174 for more details about making your book the success it should be. Mention that you are an FOJ, friend of Judith's, and that you heard about NZ Graphics on your guide to book publishing. Your guide to book publishing. Everything you want to know but didn't know what to ask. If you want to write and publish a book. If you want to be successful as an author. Your guide to book publishing. Everything you want to know but didn't know what to ask is for you. Stay tuned and you'll hear about statistics, scenarios, and strategies on what to do now to get you published. So let's get back to the show. And here again is your host, Dr. Judith Bryles. All right, we're talking copy editing, and as before we went to the break, um, I was <laughs> kind of t- sharing some of the horror things that we've had in our offices that have come through that the authors were oblivious. I mean, and they truly were clueless and oblivious, too, and as we got into it and told them it was going to cost more money, they didn't get it, and I think one of the things that you all need to understand is that you know, as, as we authors, as we put together our books and we're writing, no one is giving us a paycheck to do this. This is what we do um, on the side. Um, in, we fit in between everything else. Um, some of you may be full-time writers and authors, and is, this is part of your, you know, job, so to speak. But most of us have other for paid jobs, and we forget, or we, maybe we sometimes assume, I mean, that's been my take, that because you don't get really paid for creating your masterpiece, their expectations is is that there are people who are going to come in and work with your words will also work free um, and don't get caught in that trap. I mean, they have mortgages, they pay rent, they buy groceries, they do everything else, and they are making a living, yes, with your words, that... They're making a living, and you're going to have to pay them. So make sure that whoever you negotiate with, with whatever it is, whether it's illustrators or it's layout people, that you really clearly understand what the charges are from the get-go. All right. So back to copy editing. My assumption is in straight proofreading copy editing that the, it's, it's in fairly good shape that we are looking for catches. We're looking for segues that don't make sense. We're looking for maybe some holes that don't fit. Um, I know that I, when I'm looking at a book before I turn it over to one of our copy editors, I'm looking at, especially in the nonfiction arena, I'll be looking for, um, as I go through the book very quickly, I will be looking for um, items that might be better as a sidebar or an additional part or a call out of some sort. And I'll have a discussion with the author, do we duplicate uh, 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 text, do we duplicate that copy or do we uh, call it out right where it lands in the flow of it and we, we make those decisions for that. I also will, you know, look, do we want to have something at the front of a chapter, whether it's fiction or nonfiction. Sometimes in a fiction book, pulling out a really saucy or a sassy, or a snappy, or some kind of a, oh my God, I can't believe that that was said, or it's coming. It's almost like a tease that you might want to throw out at the opening line in the chapter, um, right under, you know, whatever the number of the chapter is, 
um, and lead them into it. So that's one of the things that I will look for in my services um, that will go along to that kind of thing. And I, just to just to pop the book a little bit. In cost for copy editing, they can range depending on what the book is again, because sometimes very detailed or an academic book takes a little while, so a little like molasses sometimes you go through. But anywhere from two to ten pages in an hour. Um, if it's pretty clean, you're going to get up to that eight to ten pages per hour. They'll be charging anywhere from, oh, twenty-five. Um, it could be going up to sixty-five dollars an hour based on the experience, again, of the editor on the low end. I would expect to pay on a low end, on a smaller book, five hundred bucks, on a high end. Um, if it needs a lot of work in it, again, if they're going to have to do more than just copy editing, you can get as high as 7,000. You don't want to go there. But um, typically, we see most of the proofreading we come into play in the around 1,000 up to around 2,000 um, hour and hours. And it depends upon how long the books is um, in that area. So that's copy editing. Now, I have a third one which we call in our office the cold I edit. And that is a final read through before the book goes to print but after it has been laid out as a book. The individual, we have two people from our offices who do these things and the individual who does that book has not had her hands on the book at all. They may have heard us talking about it or they may have no, they know that the book will be coming to them because some books are more appropriate for one of the editors than the other but they have not been allowed to see the book at all because you need you want you know what you deserve this edit this final edit um, it, it's not an expensive edit and they are the, the book is done it, 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 it cannot be done on an e-reader, it cannot be done on a laptop, it cannot be done on a desktop, it must be printed out. And they literally will sit with it and read it as a book book. You will be amazed at what they find. Are words missing sometimes? Yep, they are. Is maybe a line, did a line get dropped in layout for some reason? Yep, sometimes that happens. Are quote marks backwards? Um, in the text, yeah, sometimes that happens. Is 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 a question mark missing? Is an exclamation point missing? Is a period missing? Are there two or three periods when they shouldn't be? And it's not in, in the lips. They're looking for all that. Is there maybe a, a double space when it should be a single space? Um, is that there? They will look for all those oddball things. And I mean, and, and I'm not going to rarely, I mean, the lowest amount we, I think we ever had in a cold eye that came back was 12. We've had over a hundred come back sometimes just weird little things. And it also, and they'll come back and they'll question and they'll, I, I have, they'll put RR notes to me. It means to reread, re, would you reread this sentence and does it really make sense? Because I'm a little confused. That's what you want done. Your book deserve it, deserves it. The cost will range between three to five hundred dollars, depending upon the size and the type of book. And it is absolutely well worth it. All right. So we've left we've left the editing side, um, and now we're going to take a peek at what are the cost of if you're going to publish this yourself. You're going to have to go after your ISBN, which stands for the International Standard Book Number. And it's recommended if you're going to do a print book or want it placed in a, in a library. And also I'm going to tell you this. This is where we separate the hobby books, the vanity books, from the real book books that are out there. And just as an FYI, do you know that over, over, right now, as we enter into our 10th month of the year, we're coming to the 10th month of the year of 2014, almost 2 million books have been published. Two million. Now, they don't all have ISBNs. A lot of these are ebooks, and Amazon doesn't require an ebook, but I'm going to recommend you do an ebook uh, ISBN because some, some of the platforms require an ISBN for your ebook. And it just shows that you're more serious. There are third parties out here who sell ISBNs, and I'm going to tell you do not buy them. Do not buy them. 
because they're their ISDNs, they're not your ISDNs. When you buy your ISDNs, it's tied into your publishing name. There is only one authorized dealer in North America, um, in, 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 in USA, and that's Bowker. And the best place to go to get them is to go to My Identifiers, and that's M Y I D E N T I F I E R E S dot com for years. I'm going to recommend you buy 10 of them. One will be for your print book. And you're saying, but I'm doing print on demand. It's print book. Put one in there. Well, I'm going to use Create Space, they have free ice bins. Get your own. Do not say you're printed through Create Space. Create your own publishing imprint. Put one for your ISBN. If you have a re revision, if it has more than a third revision, it's a new book, new ISBN. It keeps the life. You'll change the copy, right, uh, uh, code. And by the way, let me just say this to all of you very quickly. We are now moving into fall autumn. Books that are printed. In this time zone, I'm going to highly recommend that you put next year's copyright date on it. Put, start putting 215. Why? It'll keep your book younger, longer. Because if you put 214, January rolls around and people say, oh, it's an old book. It's an old book. It's last year's book. 215 will keep it present for 15 months. So my advice to you. All right, so you're going to get 10 ISBNs. A cost for a singleton is 125 bucks through uh, through Bowker's myidentifiers.com. It's a very simple website to go to. Ten of them is 295. You will go through them very quickly. So my advice: please do that. Make sure that you have it. Um, and as you go that way, all right, we're going to come up to our next break. When we come back, guess what we're going to talk about? Printing books, printing books, and getting the layout. This is Judith Bryles. You're listening to Author You, Your Guide to Book Publishing. It's the place where authors who want to be seriously successful will go and listen and learn. We'll be right back. is your guide to book publishing everything you want to know but didn't know what to ask with your host dr judith briles and we'll be right back with more great information right after these on the rockstar radio network since 1987 color house graphics has set the standard for quality book production whether you decide to print a small quantity of books or need a large print run depend on color house to help you You'll receive professional help and advice the moment you reach one of our representatives. If you mention hearing about us on your guide to book publishing with Judith Bryles, we will provide you with discount on the first order you place. To speak with a project manager, call us toll-free at 800-454-1916 or visit us at www.colorhousegraphics.com. Ned Thompson and Harry Shore started Thompson Shore in 1972. They believed employees with great character would make up the best company. They were right. They hired people who were not only experts in bookmaking, but who were obsessed with quality and delivering exceptional customer service. Almost 40 years later, Thompson Shore remains a 100% employee-owned company. Ned and Harry knew that successful customer projects are a direct result of empowered employees. We specialize in all books for large and small publishers. Creating beautiful and well-made books, we're dedicated to pleasing our customers by making the experience a good one from start to finish. The personal touch we have with our customers allows us to be innovative in solving their most difficult challenges. Our platform also ensures that we can remain flexible to meet our customers' unique needs and expectations. Our marketing kit can create buzz for your time 
title, Enhancing the Promotion of Your Book During Infancy. When you need to test the market to gauge your future sales, we can provide digitally printed books that will transition seamlessly into a larger offset run. From ebook to hard copy to delivery, our skillful customer service teams are at the ready to answer your most pressing question. At Thompson Shore, we know that making the highest quality books requires more than just best technologies. It requires superior customer service, professionalism to the trade, and commitment to environmental and social values. With these standards of excellence in place, you can be sure that we will always help you put your best book forward. Welcome back to your guide to book publishing. Everything you want to know but didn't know what to ask. Coming up, you'll hear more about statistics, scenarios, and strategies on what to do now to get you published. So let's get back to the show. And here again is your host, Dr. Judith Bryles. Okay, so we're halfway through. We still have a lot of things that you're going to have to do. We're just talking about some of the basics, copy editing, editing, proofing. Um, um, your writing is all going to come into play. And that's critical. And, and, you know, I did mention anything about ghostwriting. So what happens if you've got a great story but... Ah, your writing is just not so hot. Ghost writers can cost, you know, I think the lowest I ever saw was $10,000 to do a book. Um, and I've seen them up to $80,000. And there's all kinds of things that get put to gay. So not all of us can write a check for to pay someone to write our own book. Um, so that's why we do it ourselves. Or we can write. Or we'd love to do it that way. But there are a lot of people out there, especially from professionals, that want their book to enhance their credibility, to position themselves with their expertise, that they actually will pay people. And it's certainly when you come to celebrities, that if you think a celebrity writes their own book, you know, I've, I've got some snow I want to sell you, um, and, and we both live in Alaska, that it, it, they don't. They don't. In fact, some of them probably haven't even read their books. But... Most of them use ghosts, and they pay for them, and sometimes what happens is they've got a, a major publisher behind it that's going to give a hefty advance, and a great deal, if not all, of the advance goes to the writer, uh, the ghost, to take care of it. And sometimes they participate in royalty payments, sometimes they don't, sometimes their name is on the book cover, sometimes you will never see their name anywhere in that process. So I wanted to get that out on the table. All right, let's talk about, um, I mentioned uh, before I went to the break, that their big costs can come into play here in your interior design as well as in your printing. So let's tackle interior design. Um, and when people buy a book, and, and this is the cover, when people look at a book, um, that book cover is really critical. And, and then the interior design becomes critical. Now, some people say you shouldn't spend much money on the interior design. Yeah, you know, I'm going to disagree with that because I think it's important to be uh, visually attractive. I think you've got to have a little eye candy in there, especially with nonfiction-related books. People expect with fiction that you read line after line after line after line after line. But you know what? There's no reason why you can't gussy that up a little bit, too. You could take, for example, pick up a, a portion of the image or something from the front cover that you might carry on the opening of each chapter. When we worked with uh, a book called The First Raven Mocker, which was a debut fiction book that's done fairly well. And what, um, what happened um, is that uh, you... We, we pulled a line from interior of the book. We used it in on the uh, the first opening chapter. Something reading in a line that grabbed me um, from the chapter. And this is by way of a book that came in in I think ten chapters. And by the time we were done in breaking it up, which is by something else an editor will do, maybe your chapters are too long. And by the time I was done with that book, we had forty or forty two chapters. Um, so they are much more readable, that people can get through them, they can take a break from them, and they may, they need, may need to. So in Courtney's book, what we did is we pulled a line from interior of the chapter, plus we had the Raven Mocker um, on, on each of the openings, so it had a continuity to it, and people really commented positively when they saw that. 
for nonfiction, your designer um, is going to be uh, most likely inserting some type of artwork. It could be illustrations, it could be cartoons, it could be uh, call-outs or um, uh, pull-outs of them some sort. It could be photos in there. So one of the things I will tell you to help keep these costs down a little bit is that don't move stuff around if you can do it. Uh, we had a, a layout that got out of control and expensive that involved 250 pieces of artwork that was inserted in. They were photos. And she kept changing where she wanted the photos to be. And photos were not all the same size. They were different shapes. They were different portions of the layout within it. And what she couldn't grasp is that every time the layout designer did it is that he was actually recreating the chapter. That whole chapter had to be laid out again. And, and it's important for you to understand this is not something where you do a copy and paste like a Word document. There is shaping and there's sizing and there's all kinds of things that go on in layout. It's just not simple, simple, simple. It takes a little bit of work and finesse for the designer. So keep that in mind. If you're going to use art, which I have no no problem in, in, in using, have an idea where it's going to go and where it's it, where it belongs um, in there. Or you work with the designer with a conversation beforehand, and if you give him and her carte blanche to lay out these pieces of work, um, then let them lay it out. If you want it specifically in an area. You need to make a notation in your manuscript before the layout person gets it. Insert blah, blah, blah here. And let me give you another tip. When you use artwork, create a separate file folder and insert it in there. And I actually make what I call a table of contents. It's not a table of contents that's going to go in the book. It's just a table of contents, a table of art, actually for the designer that you have chapter one, uh, photo of mod, you know, uh, photo of blah, 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 and what it is. And then on your interior design, you say insert photo mod, insert blah, blah, blah. And so that designer can just go right into that folder and yank that baby out and drop it in exactly where you want it. Make it easy. Please make it easy for, for uh, both of you. And it'll make it easier on your pocketbook, and it will certainly create help with brain damage for the designer. So um, keep that in mind, because that's truly important in this process. All right, the only interiors that should be predominantly text, as I said, are fiction. And, um, and I think it's wise to consider using part of that front cover as part of each chapter opener, that image for nonfiction. You're going to just, I'm kind of doing the summary here, your, your interiors need white space. And I think, I want you to think about magazines. Look at magazines, that there is white space. They use repetitive things. They have call-outs. They'll, they'll pull out a line that, to, to pop it, to grab the reader, to, to pull them in. Um, there are subheadings to break it up. You want to have visual interest to keep the reader interested and on reading. And for nonfiction, it's important to think engagement. You don't lecture. When you start going into the lecture mode, the glaze goes over the eyes and people get lost. If you're including those photos, pricing is going to be higher, I'm going to guarantee it. In artwork, it's going to be higher. So your tip is to make sure you place it once. If you move it around, you may, the, your designer may have to redesign the entire chapter. Now, what's a low-end cost for an interior design? Around 500 bucks. Um, what's the high end? Oh, I'm not going to say the sky's the limit, but it could go into several thousand dollars, several thousand dollars. And the individual who kept moving all her uh, photography around, uh, these 250 pictures, she ended up with uh, like a $7,000 layout bill, and she was in shell shock. I had originally estimated $3,500 because of the level of artwork. What I did not include in my estimate was that it was going to, the chapters, multiple chapters were going to be redesigned several times and substitutions coming in. So the more you can deal with that up front, I'm telling you, you're going to save a ton of money in that process. 
All right, let's talk about the book cover. Now, your book cover, as you get into that, readers do judge a book by its cover. They're important, and it's critical that your cover design be optimized for print, for digital, for thumbnail. You may ha need to have a different cover or modification of your cover that's on a printed book for a mobile or e-reader device. So it's it's very important to do that. Your, your front cover says, pick me up. Hey, you who look me over. The back cover is going to supply the hooks and the benefits. Don't get into lecture mode on your back cover. Benefits. What, what's it going to do? And remember, I've said this before. It's not problems that make the world go around. It's, 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 it's money that makes the world go around. And the money for you is you're the problem solver. So your book is the problem solver. You've got the solutions. You've got the, an, the, the answers to whatever ails them. And by the way, that's for fiction too. Whatever ails them is they want some entertainment. They want some fantasy. They need to drop out. They want to be engaged and do that. You're the problem solver. Your book is going to do that. Very low end for cover. Oh, maybe 50 bucks. Please don't do this. It's going to be mediocre. It, up to, it could be several thousands of dollars. But you know what? You can get a really great cover um, for under a thousand dollars, in my opinion, um, in that area. So work on it. So when people buy a book, they look at a book, the cover beckons them. They turn over the book and they look that over and they, they will spend where it's, it's a five to a seven second grab for that cover. For the back book cover, it could be anywhere from 15 to 30 seconds. And then what they do is they go on the interior and look it over to see is this, you know, is it engaging? Does it look good? Is it clean? Is there some white space? White space. Um, if you have a dust jacket or flaps on your cover, they read those and then the decision is made. So all those things come into play. Um, they're critical, they're important, they're the key elements, it's where you're going to be spending a ton of money. A ton of money is going to go into here very, very quickly. And, and you want to just be clued into that. All right, and coming up now, we're going to be looking at printing cost. And this is where your next big baby is going to come into play that you have to have. Um, and we're going to talk about print on demand. I'm going to talk about advanced reader copies, and I'm, I'm going to get into um, your offset printing. So, books, what's the cost? This is Judith Bryles. You're listening to Author You, your guide to book publishing. is your guide to book publishing. Everything you want to know but didn't know what to ask with your host, Dr. Judith Bryles. And we'll be right back with more great information right after these on the Rockstar Radio Network. The book shepherding concept is simple. The publishing world is changing and so must you. You need an experienced shepherd and a guide to partner with you as you create, strategize, develop, publish, and achieve your publishing goals. You can't do it alone without paying the price. You can spend your money creating a book that turns out to be so-so, or you can create a book that looks and feels classy, builds your brand, and is a financial success, a bestseller. It's your choice. You choose. You need the book shepherd. Publishing is riddled with obstacles, sometimes nightmares for the author. You don't need problems. You want solutions. Dr. Judith Bryles will shepherd you through the maze and the chaos. At times, she's had to step in and rescue a book, a book that has been sabotaged by a publisher or by a publishing service provider or sometimes even the author themselves. Judith Bryles is the book shepherd. If you want to create a book with no regrets, give her a call today, 303-885-2207. That's 303-885-2207 or email her at judith at bryles.com. By the way, Bryles is spelled B-R-I-L-E-S. Follow Judith on Twitter at My Book Shepherd and on Facebook at The Book Shepherd. At Total Printing Systems, customer service is our priority. We are located in Southern Illinois. 
Our employees have an average of 18 years experience and know that customer relationships are important to our continued success. We have been a short run book printer for nearly 40 years and always stay at the forefront of technology. Our niche is from one to 5,000 copies. Today, we offer digital black and white and four color high speed inkjet printing, a cost effective way to introduce color into your short run titles. We of course offer traditional offset printing as well. Bindery is done in house from adhesive case binding to PUR perfect binding to mechanical binding of all types, including side sewing. We provide warehousing, kitting, distribution, inventory management, a new print on demand facility, streaming browser based ebooks, and bookstore. Call us at 1 800 465 5200 for a quote on your next book project. You can also visit our website at www.tps1.com. Welcome back to your guide to book publishing. Everything you want to know but didn't know what to ask. If you want to write and publish a book, if you want to be successful as an author, your guide to book publishing, everything you want to know but didn't know what to ask, is for you. Stay tuned and you'll hear about statistics, scenarios, and strategies on what to do now to get you published. So let's get back to the show. And here again is your host, Dr. Judith Bryles. Wow, time goes fast. All right, our final segment. Final segment, we're going to talk about getting your book printed. And um, there's a variety of things that you can do with print-on-demand, POD. And people think, oh, I'm going to publish POD. No, that's a type of printing print on demand. So you can use things like CreateSpace, there's uh, Ingram Spark, um, and the book only gets printed when someone buys it. Uh, and it used to be you, you, you for the uh, Ingram tie-in, you used to go to Lightning Source, and Lightning Source is owned by Ingram, and now they lead everyone over to um, Ingram Spark, which has a much more full service. And I will tell you, it's a higher quality then create space, but, but let me also say this: that you do have the Amazon Gorilla behind you, and Create Space does offer some goodies. And if you want to just test, you put your toe in the water and do some testing, it's a good way to go to start up and keep your costs down. If you're doing a short run, a short run is less than 500 uh, copies of a book, or an offset. A print run, which is lots, like thousands, prices are going to vary. And, the, and you need to keep this in mind that your price goes down as the volume goes up. Just That's just the way it is. So prices go down um, with the more copies that you order. So what kind of cost are you looking for? Print on demand, you're probably going to be playing around with a minimum of $3 per copy and up. Your, the size of your book, both the size, size of your book and the number of pages of your book will be a factor in here. The whether or not you're just black text or if you have color, like in, you know, uh, for color throughout. Children's books are going to have color throughout. That's going to be a factor and you can easily get up to six, seven dollars a book on that. Offset can be much less. For a very small book, you can get it under a buck a book. Um, for a typical book, um, I had a, a, my book called Stabotage, which I wrote for the healthcare industry. Um, Stabotage, it was just under 200 pages, around 212 pages. Um, and I think that, and we printed, uh, we would print anywhere, our runs ran from 1,500 to 3,000 uh, print runs. And we would come in, uh, you know, around the $2, $2 to $2.40 a book um, for that particular book. So, and it was a book that had a, a type of dust jacket, we call them uh, French flaps, and it had it on there. So it, it, adds, it certainly did on the cost. If I did a regular print run, uh, a paperback book without the flap cost, it would be at least probably 50 or 60 cents a book cheaper with that. All right. So for, and, and there, there could be, you know, additional costs, but you always want to ask for them. Now, here's something else you want to, I want to bring in. If you're going to do ARCs, ARCs are advanced reader copies, and people will use them for reviews, um, which I'm going to talk about next. But if you have advanced reader copies, you know, you're talking about getting 50, maybe 25, 50, maybe 50, 100 books that 
one of the very best um, uh, groups that I found working with happens to be one of our sponsors and you'll hear their ads as you've gone through it and that's Total Printing Systems. Total Printing Systems um, and they are well worthwhile and you can read more about Total Printing Systems on the authoru.org website. Uh, if you look under Premier Partners, they will be in there with lots of information and contact. But they do they do them quickly. And a couple of weeks, I, I mean, I had one of our authors say when she got her ARCs back saying that um, if my book would look this good, I would be happy. So that's, and they're, they're an advanced reader copy. You want to put it as an advanced reader copy, not for sale. I would put it on the front and I would put it on the back on the cover. Uh, have your designer put it on the cover just for the special run so you don't find them up on Amazon selling used books or on eBay with that. Now, reviews. That's where your advanced reader copies. There are many sources for authors and publishers to get professional rules. Uh, reviews, I would recommend uh, if you can get into Kirkus or the Library Journal, that's hot. Publishers Weekly, hot, hot, hot. Forward reviews, hot. All of those have their own sites. Um, again, for the author, you members and in the author resource in this month's issue, I have a very detailed article. Uh, you have to log in to get that, but a very detailed article of who, what, where, why, and how to contact these individuals. So you want to, uh, you can go on their sites, Kirkus.com, LibraryJournal.com, Publishers Weekly. Uh, Publishers Weekly has a new service called Book Light. Um, that they 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 will they have free now these are free now do they have paid versions yes they do and for with the exception of Library Journal which all the librarians read but the uh, Kirkus has a a paid supplement which is just under five hundred dollars that you can pay for a review uh, Publishers Weekly has has one through their book Light now and Ford Reviews has it through Clarion. And, um, and they're the same reviewers, the editors are involved in this process, uh, but you get to pay for them because they only can take so many and put so many into their print journals on there. Now, getting reviews post-publication, um, and, and which is what I just mentioned. So Kirkus is called Kirkus Reviews. They're 425. Um, Book Life with Publishers Weekly. You know, it could be free if they bring you in. Otherwise, there is a small fee. Uh, there's also Blue Ink Reviews. Um, excellent. And they're $395. And Forward Reviews Clarion is $499. Now, another cost that's going to come up will be your marketing, your, your PR. You can spend a lot of money in here. as And you could feel like you could have a bottomless pit going on here. And you want to be careful. So you can pay someone to help you market and set it up. Blog, blog tours for anywhere from ten to sixty-five dollars per hour. For ten dollars, you might get a college student, which could be great. That could be great, an intern type person that could bring it into play, and they could really get you set up. And here's what one of the advantages is: they are pretty moxy with um, social media, and you want that. You need it. You desire it. All right, so. For forty to sixty-five dollars, you're going to hour. You're going to get a professional marketer, so that's going to be your difference. And I'm going to recommend that you pay someone at least ten hours, at least ten hours to market you, and on the high end, forty hours. You need to get kickstarted and out there, on there. Ideally, you do a lot of the marketing yourself. Also, good publicists can get you radio spots and press pickups for anything from a thousand to five thousand a month. You got to be careful. I, I had someone today said they love their the publicity people, but was it worth the twelve thousand dollars she paid for her uh, four month run? And she will say it really wasn't. It really wasn't. So the low end, your cost here could be a hundred bucks. That ten dollars by ten, and it could be five thousand and up. So be careful here. Now distribution. You need to bring this into play very quickly. You can do this all by yourself by following the instructions to get your books distributed to the various retailers. Amazon, think of that as a distributor. People drive there. Barnes & Noble distribution, Apple iBooks distribution, Kobo distribution. Those are all going to be for E. They're all free. E, free. Click on instructions and take it from there. 
Distribution for fee. Any third party will take it at percentage of each book sold. Please note that. Make sure you understand what the costs are up front. They will vary greatly. The costs, shipping to the vendor, warehousing your books, restocking, meaning if a bookstore orders a book and doesn't sell it and sends it back, there's going to be a restocking fee. There's always going to be a clause in there that says miscellaneous. Understand what miscellaneous is. They're going to take a percentage of sales and it's going to vary. Understand what that is. 10, it can vary, and it's going to be, I'm going to tell you, anywhere from 10% up to 30% of your net billable. You could end up owing more than what you get on a sold book. So you want to control this. Next up, artwork and illustrations. All right, if you're going to have artwork, it's going to cost money. Artwork could include, by the way, having tables made, graphs made. All right, so it could be photography. They could be cartoons. It could be individual fine line drawings. Any of those things can come in and define as artwork. Know what the cost is, and a lot of times they're going to want to know what the parameter is of how you're going to be using it because they may charge you more. And if you want an exclusive, if you're getting original drawings, you know what? There could be even a higher cost in all this. Um, and some, some artists just give it, you know, take it and run with it, which I know when I did on my book, Author You. Uh, creating and building your, your uh, author and book platforms. When Don did my art for it, there's a lot of art in this book, it was, you know, a charge and you go. You go and you run with it and, um, and, and I was thrilled. So keep costs down. You can go to Fiverr, F-I-V-R-R, Fiverr.com and up. Typically anywhere from 50 bucks to maybe 150 per piece of art. It's going to depend on your usage um, and some cover artwork you can also bring into this way. So just know it can get pricey. Um, keep it under control. What else? Well, your imagination will take you and run with it, but the reality is publishing is not cheap. You can do it for a few hundred bucks. It usually looks like it. It just, it usually looks like it and you want to be tuned in on that um, and, <laughs> and be careful here. So um, I, I pay people to lay out. I pay people to do my editing. I even, you know, as much as I do, I still have other eyes that come in on me. I always pay people to do my cover design. Um, and of course, I have to pay for printing as well as the creation of ebooks and those kind of things. And ebooks, one of it, you know, ebook. 150 to 300 max is what we spend. And with that, I'm going to bid you adieu. And we'll be back next week with another great show on Author You, your guide to book publishing. This is Judith Bryles. a part of your guide to book publishing everything you want to know but didn't know what to ask with your host dr judith briles each week